Uh, it, it's disheartening for him, I know, because he's such a competitor. Um, but it's part of the game, and, and uh, you know, he's such a great leader that that he's going to make sure that he finds a way to contribute in some form or fashion uh, by mentoring the young guys and, and mentoring the whole offense. You talked to Joshua Dobbs yesterday. He talked about 16 hours of class load he takes, the recognition he's getting on campus. How how does he handle it? How how does he do it? And have you ever had a guy like him that takes on so much? Well, he, he's obviously very bright and uh, is ambitious in, in his schoolwork as an engineering major. So he's, he's got a little bit of an extra load when you add all the labs and everything that goes along with that. Uh, but he's, he's taken everything in stride. He always has. Uh, he, he's a tough guy to rattle uh, both on the field and off the field. So um, he's, he's managed to, uh, you know, to just, to just keep going and focus on uh, what's important and, and uh, you know, go through his daily routine. You talked about his mindset that you know, he's going to be the starter every week. All, all season, even when he was third string, whatever. Is that what you've seen from him week in and week out? Uh, all of our guys. And again, we've stressed that all season long, not just with the quarterbacks, but with, with our entire offense, our entire team, that you always prepare as if you're the starter because you never know when your number is going to be called. And never more evident than at the quarterback position where, where last year we went through a couple injuries and, and then obviously this year uh, going through the same experience. So uh, those guys have been through it and they understand and, and therefore have prepared, uh, have, have put in the necessary time to prepare. What's the biggest way in which he's grown, improved since the last time we saw him as a starter in the late last season? I'd say number one is the quickness with which he's making decisions. You know, um, obviously there's a lot we need to work on as it relates to footwork, footwork and ball location, uh, but he's he's been much more decisive uh, in in his pro decision making process, and his vision has also improved. You know, he, he's able to come off the field and give me uh, very detailed accounts of what he saw, which is usually very accurate. This week, is it more about fundamentals or more about install? What's, what's the percentage you guys are coming using? Anytime you go into a bye week, you take a step back, you take a deep breath, and you, you focus on yourselves in addition to your next opponent. So we're able to analyze our self-scout tendencies, and, and as individuals, uh, guys have targeted certain areas of improvement and, and uh, you know can, can slow down and really absorb uh, all the teaching that they're getting and all the all the different situations that they're getting in practice. When you're coming off a big win like you guys had last week. Would you rather play this weekend or do you like the bye coming at this time? Well, I, I've never been in a situation where the bye week comes at a bad time, you know, especially this deep into the season. Uh, there's always dings and bruises that, that guys need to recover from. And uh, at, at this point, it gives you a little extra time to prepare. And like I said, both the players and the coaches can take a deep breath and put a little extra thought into into our opponent and into ourselves. Players always like to be tough, and they never want to tell you they're tired or banged up, but are some of the guys this week saying, man, this came at the right time? Are they kind of admitting that this is a, a, a blessing? Yeah, it, it always comes at the right time, uh, this deep into the season. So, um, you know, we focused on recovery and, and, and making sure that we get our minds and our bodies right. How do you balance utilizing Josh's athleticism while also trying to protect him and limit the number of hits? Yeah, that's, uh, that's always a tricky part of, um, of balancing a quarterback that can, that can be a weapon with his feet. Uh, you, you want to limit the number of hits he takes, but um, you also do, as we, as we talked about last week, do whatever it takes to win the game. So, uh, you know, he's got to make, as much as anything, he's got to make great decisions uh, in, in the throw game and in, in, and in the run game about maybe when to give it or pull it and uh, different things like that in our, in, our re, in our read schemes. He says he's gained about 20 pounds since late last fall. How much of a difference has that made just in terms of his mobility, ability to kind of not be able to take a hit, not go down. Yeah, that, that's huge, and that's something we've stressed since day one with him, uh, making sure that he puts on the size and weight as much as anything, yes, to improve his athleticism, but also to improve his durability, and, and I think it's paid off. Coach, could you just kind of go back to the South Carolina game in that last four minutes? Just what did it feel like, and how how confident did you feel with your play calling and everything just seemed to be working and clicking? Yeah, and, uh, you know, we knew, uh, obviously, you, you get the ball with, uh, just under five minutes and down two scores. You know you have to push the ball down the field. Uh, and and jo I give credit to Josh and, and to all of our guys. I mean, Alton Howard came up huge in those situations. And, and uh, Josh made great decisions about when to push the ball down the field, when to get down those check downs, when to work the sidelines. Um, and, and when the quarterback, uh, we, we always talk about know the intentions of the play caller. And when the quarterback uh, is, is, is doing a good job like that, it, it makes my job easier as a play caller uh, because it opens up the playbook a little bit. Do you feel like 
Josh, the way he's played the last couple of weeks is really gaining your trust and, and you feel like you can do more and more each week with him? I, I have a lot of confidence in him. I always have. I have confidence in all of our quarterbacks. I, we wouldn't limit our playbook in any way with any one of our guys. So, um, it, you know, obviously it's exciting that he is making plays, but uh, as we've stressed since day one, uh, great quarterbacks perform at a consistent level day in and day out, and that's something that, that he needs to make sure he does. Well, what are the next steps for Josh when you talk about those things? Well, what, what do you tell him this week? Hey, this is what we need to be working on to make sure when Kentucky rolls around you better. Uh, I, I could give you specifics of fundamentals like uh, footwork and knee bend, uh, lead foot placement in, in his throwing, to, to, you know, to name a few things. Uh, he needs to do a better job with his eyes uh, in general, uh, using them to manipulate defenders uh, and using them to see what he needs to see. Um, you know, the, the one interception he threw uh, down in the red zone, he, he didn't do a good job with his eyes. So again, there's always stuff to improve upon. I think he, he's a perfectionist at heart and he realizes uh, that there's plenty to work on. What are all the kind of places he's kind of sort of evolved since you've had, what, what, what's different about him now, you know, mechanically, fundamentally, just everything from when you got a hold of him? Yeah, there, there, there's a few things. He's, um, he's doing a better job uh, of getting rid of the ball more quickly. Uh, he, he's cleaned up some mechanical issues uh, that slowed down his release. Um, he's making quicker decisions. That's first and foremost, uh, if you ask me, uh, he, which allows him to be more decisive with the ball uh, and, and allows him to be more accurate in smaller windows when, when you're throwing the ball on time and, and making timely decisions. I'd say those are the main things. He mentioned mechanics. Is there anything specific that he was doing, Anything, any kind of hitch he had just in his delivery or anything like that? Was uh, sort of it's it just eliminating up? wasted movement. I'd say is the, is the big thing. And, and, and then also adding 20 pounds has, mm -hmm. 20 pounds of muscle has added to his, his arm strength and velocity. What all has that weight done for him, both as a runner and as a passer? It, it's that it's um, added to his durability, added to his athleticism, mm -hmm. uh, and, and added to his arm strength. What did you know about him when you got a hold of him, I guess, when, when you guys came in here? Just, you know, well, you, you know, I remember the recruiting process. Uh, we got on him late, um, and mm -hmm. What I remember about watching his video was uh, I watched a, a video of every throw he made in the season. And he had a very, very high completion percentage to the point where as I was watching the video, I thought it was a highlight video and then realized, no, this is every throw we took from his, from his senior year in high school. Uh, so he is, he's very accurate. He makes good decisions. Uh, obviously, he's, he's very intelligent, which helps, um, which helps in that decision-making process. Uh, and, and then obviously you're relying on the information from the head coach uh, about his intangibles and leadership, uh, which which you get you get a sense of when you first meet uh, Josh. But but obviously all the feedback we had gotten been very 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 positive. You mentioned him being really intelligent. Obviously a lot of quarterbacks usually are. You can play the position you pretty much have to be. But you know he's an aerospace engineering major. I mean how how high level is just his mind? It, it, it's he he's got a very good memory, and uh, that in turn allows him to process information more quickly. And that comes along with reps. Obviously the reps. The game reps he got last season were invaluable, and all the reps he got through through spring and training camp and, and throughout the course of the season were invaluable. Uh, but but there, there's um, there's definitely a, a, a decision making process that's sped up. How much harder does a guy like Darrell Scott have to work as a true freshman to, to gain y'all's trust after missing camp, missing basically the, the first week of the season, Darrell the first month of the season? Yeah, Darrell works very hard, and um, he has our trust. So. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's a matter of him having to work any harder to gain our trust. Um, you know, I, I, I feel fine putting Darrell in the game, and, and uh, you know, he's had, uh, especially this week, he's had a very good week of practice. What does he bring? What are his best attributes? Darrell. Yeah. Uh, he's he's very quick. He has a, a good short short area burst. Uh, gets to full speed very quickly and, and can really hit the hole. Two more. On the goal line stand in the first quarter against South Carolina, was there any specific breakdown you noticed? Uh, th there's a couple things we, we didn't get push um, at, at the point of attack was, was the main thing. You, you said you got on him late, on, on Josh late basically. How did you even hear about it? What well, you know, sort of we got here in December uh, when Tyler Bray left early to go to the NFL. We knew we needed another quarterback, so um, we kind of scoured the area. Uh, so, you, know, was, you just you hear about guys that, that have done well and, uh, you know, at, at the time, um, trying to think we, he, he's obviously from the Atlanta area uh, coach Jones had been in his school recruiting another individual and his name came up I can't remember the individual off the top of my head uh, but Josh's name came up we went back we took a look and, and obviously like what we saw
How much more fun is practice on coming off a 600-yard offensive performance? Uh, practice is always fun. Um, but, but you know, our guys, they, they, they have uh, – Obviously, a little more confidence, a little more juice, and, and um, you know, it, it, have attacked it uh, with with a little more, um, you know, with a little more intensity because uh, because they know what's at stake. Frankly, it's not as much uh, last week's win as it is hey, what we have uh, at, at our finger, fingertips to accomplish in the coming weeks. How much does that reinforce? This is what can happen when you execute. Well, we, we talk about it all the time. It's it's uh, eleven guys being on the same page and, and executing. Um, as one, and, and when when that happens, it, it's neat to see that what 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 the result can be.